The Nun is a big step forward for The Conjuring series, giving the shared universe of horror movies its biggest opening weekend yet. The third franchise subseries after The Conjuring and Annabelle movies, The Nun works harder than any of its predecessors to make connections to the films that came before it. Whether it's a visual reference to a past movie, the conclusion of a series-long plot, or the presence of the demon Valak's name all over the place, the movie has plenty to offer for eagle-eyed viewers looking for clues about how everything connects. If you watch the spooky movie through your fingers, we've got you covered. Here are some small details you might have missed in The Nun. Original Creation The Nun is the fifth entry in the expanding Conjuring universe, and it asserts itself within that continuity in a variety of ways. For one, the movie's opening scene about two sisters in the St. Cardus Abbey fighting off the demon nun features an almost perfect recreation of the post credit scene of Annabelle Creation, which teased the demon nun spin-off in 2017. In The Nun, it's revealed that the spooky specter coming down the hall is pursuing Sister Victoria, who sacrifices herself to keep the demon from possessing her and entering the real world. Curiously, The Nun lacks a similar post credit sequence of its own. For whatever reason, it looks like the series' producers don't want to give people any hints of what's to come before Conjuring 3, Annabelle 3, or their next spin-off, The Crooked Man. Demonic DJ After Father Burke and Sister Irene arrive at the Abbey for an overnight stay, their sleep is interrupted by Valak, which proves itself to be a real nuisance of a demon. Instead of killing everyone immediately, the monster's first move is to wake Burke up in the middle of the night by blaring the Abbey radio with an on-the-nose song choice. Specifically, the radio that interrupts Burke's slumber is playing Joe Stafford's version of the tune You Belong To Me, which means exactly what it sounds like it means. Real subtle, Valak. Precious Memories Visible in the background of Irene and Burke's first dinner in the Abbey is a photograph that will be familiar to anyone who watched Annabelle Creation. The black-and-white snapshot was originally referenced by Sister Charlotte in the Demon Doll story, which chronologically takes place in 1955, three years after the events of The Nun. The photo shows Sister Charlotte alongside three nuns of the St. Cardus Abbey, whom she says she became very close to at some point in the past. Those relationships aren't built on in The Nun, though, since by the time Irene and Burke arrive at the Abbey in 1952, every one of the nuns Charlotte knew is presumably dead. Considering what we learn about the Abbey, it's almost a little jarring to see the sisters there ever having a moment of levity. Does Charlotte in 1955 even know her friends are dead, or that they gave their lives for such important work? It doesn't seem that way. She doesn't even recognize the face of Valak that haunts her copy of the photograph and seems to have no idea how lucky she is to have made it out alive. What's your name? Supernatural activity is at work in The Nun before Burke and Irene ever arrive at the Abbey. If you look closely, you can see the demon's name pop up in the world around them, a strange phenomenon that seems to surround the demon's activity. As Burke and Irene prepare to embark for the Abbey with their local guide Maurice, Burke accidentally places his bags in the back of an unrelated truck. It's a humorous moment, except for one odd thing, the vehicle's license plate. Aside from a few junk letters and numbers breaking up the sequence, the plate for the most part reads Valak. The demon's name can also be partially seen in Irene's introductory scene, spelled out backwards and vertically on the wall of her school classroom. Valak's presence did the same thing in The Conjuring 2. It's a weird and unexplained phenomenon, considering that the demon's name is its biggest weakness. For some reason or another, Valak can't stop spilling the beans. Pazuzu Style like a lot of demon-centric horror movies, The Nun owes a lot to The Exorcist. At least one frightening image in the movie is a very clear visual reference to that 70s classic. As Father Burke lays trapped in a wooden coffin buried alive in the Abbey's graveyard, he is grabbed from behind by Valak. As the demon claws at Burke's face, the audience can briefly see the twisted visage of the demon flash within the darkness beside Burke. The moment is highly reminiscent of The Exorcist, with that movie's demon appearing in snarling, near-subliminal flash frames. In both movies, the quick glimpses at the faces of the demons are blink-and-you'll-miss-it moments, making them some of the scariest parts of either one. Conjuring a Connection The Nun brings its story full circle in its final minutes, cutting from Romania in 1952 to Wakefield, Massachusetts 20 years later. This postscript scene loops the finale of The Nun back into the very first Conjuring movie, revealing that the lecture given by Ed and Lorraine Warren in that film was all along referring to an encounter the couple had with Maurice, aka Frenchie. Just before the epilogue kicks in, Maurice is revealed to have been possessed by Valak during the final battle in the Abbey's catacombs. It makes for a pretty sad end to the otherwise charming tour guide. So what happened to Maurice? Well, he tried to kill his wife, but instead he shot her in the arm and then he turned the gun on himself. 
The ending of The Nun briefly recreates the Conjuring scene using brand new footage of The Nun's Maurice, played by Jonas Bloquet, in place of the original actor. It's a moment that solidifies The Nun's connection to the first two Conjuring movies, revealing that the Warrens' visions of the demon nun were implanted into them by their encounter with the possessed Maurice. What began in Romania in 1952 ultimately comes to an end in 1977 London, where the Warrens decisively banish Valak from the earthly realm. For now, at least.